In this movie, I look at statistical investigations and try to show their main stages. When investigations start with a question to be answered, the statistical work tends to follow naturally. If at any stage the pupils don't know what to do next, just refer them to the question that they have posed. To answer a question sensibly, you normally need to gather evidence and with a statistical investigation, this normally takes the form of collecting data. Having collected the data, the next stage is to analyse it. Stage 3 is to interpret what has been done in stage 2. And the investigation is complete when you've returned to the original question and confirmed that you've answered it. Let's look again at these three steps. This first stage may include designing and administering a questionnaire or perhaps going to another source such as the web and trying to find suitable data there. Stage 2 could mean calculating an average or drawing a helpful chart or maybe both. And in stage 3 you look carefully at what you did in stage 2 and see if it tells you anything useful. In this example, it might be making a note of which bar is the tallest. Now I'll run through a particular example and you'll be able to see these three stages in operation. Here the starting question posed by the teacher was, does spelling improve with practice? The children took a spelling test and here are their scores out of 20. After working on their spellings and with a few spelling tips from the teacher, they took the same test again and here are their scores second time around. They calculated the mean scores for both. And by comparing these two means, the children could see that the second scores, on average, were higher than the first. So, back to the initial question, does spelling improve with practice? Well, on the evidence of this investigation, the children agreed that it could. Here's another question for investigation. Can you estimate one minute? All the children were asked to face the classroom clock and close their eyes. When the second hand of the clock reached 12, the teacher said, start. Each individual child opened their eyes when they thought one minute had elapsed and on opening their eyes they looked again at the clock and silently wrote down the number of seconds that had actually elapsed. And here are the results for all 20 children. For stage 2 they drew a dot plot and then added an arrow to highlight 60 seconds. At stage 3 the class had a lot to say about what the dot plot revealed, but what really stood out for them was how many of the estimates were less than 60 seconds. And finally, back to the initial question, the pupils came to the conclusion that the majority of people in their class tended to underestimate how long a minute was.